What is poppin' YouTube? Your trade deadline is right around the corner, so we're talking about some trade targets today. The first trade target you should be trading for is Chris Olave. Yes, I am the Chris Olave truther stan in the fantasy football community, and the reason you need to be trading for Chris Olave is because his target share has been absolutely insane. If we look at the season, Chris Olave has had a 26% target share, putting him as the wide receiver 17 on the season. But if we look at the last few weeks, 16 fantasy points, 12 fantasy points, 9 fantasy points, 16 fantasy points, Chris Olave has been a super solid contributor to your fantasy football team. And I still think the ceiling is still a lot higher when we were looking at the first three weeks of the fantasy football season, where he had 19 fantasy points, 14 fantasy points, and 18 fantasy points in PPR. Now, 1.4, the 9.2, he had a little bit of a downtrend. But if I can go trade for Chris Olave right now, as we head into the trade deadline and into the fantasy football playoffs, that's something I like to do. I have Chris Olave currently right now as a top 14 wide receiver rest of the season. So if I can go trade Devontae Smith, DJ Moore, DK Metcalf, those are all deals that I am looking to personally go do to go get some Chris Olave onto my team. My second player that you need to go be trading for right now in your fantasy football leagues is going to be Devontae Smith. I know I just talked about trading Devontae Smith for Chris Olave, but Devontae Smith right now, clear wide receiver two on the Eagles. With Dallas Goddard being out for the next few weeks, the targets are pretty much going to be funneled directly to AJ Brown or Devontae Smith. And as much as we love the talent of Devontae Smith, we just knew there was a lot of mouths to feed in this offense between Jalen Hurts rushing the ball, between DeAndre Swift rushing the ball, and between alpha level AJ Brown in the this Eagles offense. Even with all of those things attributing to less targets for Devontae Smith, even still this season, he's the wide receiver 23 on target basis with 60 targets. And he is number two in the NFL with snap share. When he's on the field, he's on the field all the time. He's number one in route participation. So if the Eagles are throwing the ball, Devontae Smith is out there. And if you look at the last two weeks, 14 fantasy points this last week, 22 fantasy points the week before. I think we're talking about Devontae Smith potentially being in every week top 12, the 13 wide receiver. And while that's exciting, he's currently not valid as that currently. Devontae Smith in a lot of rankings that I've looked around, somewhere between the wide receiver 14 to wide receiver 16 range. So if I'm able to go flip DJ Moore, DK Metcalf, and I know I just talked about both of those guys, or even two pieces and to go up and get some Devontae Smith, that's what I'm looking to do. Because if we're looking at guys that are ahead of Devontae Smith in a lot of rankings, we got guys like Puka Nakua, Jalen Waddle, Brandon Ayuk, and as much as we like those wide receivers, especially like Brandon Ayuk, when we're looking at Jalen Waddle and Puka Nakua rest of the season, like Devontae Smith is kind of in their same category as the wide receiver two on a really good offense, but the only difference is there's less competition now on the Eagles. So I think Devontae Smith definitely going into the rest of the season. We should be excited about going to trade for some Devontae Smith. My next guy we're going to be talking about is DK Metcalf. We've heard a lot of talk about DK Metcalf just being a jag, just another guy, not a great wide receiver, doesn't run great routes, and he hasn't been having a great fantasy football season. But when we look at the last few weeks, last week had six fantasy points, wasn't good. Marlon Humphrey absolutely locked him down with his 89% snap share, four targets for six fantasy points. But the week before that had 11. Week before that had 10.9, 12.4, 17.2, 13.5, 13.7. So honestly, when we look at DK Metcalf, he's been very solid. The high end upside just hasn't been there. But a lot of that could be attributed to Geno Smith not being that same efficient quarterback. As much as we love what JSN has been doing this last few weeks, Tyler Lockett has also been struggling. DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett on the struggle bus. But I think now is the time to probably go buy low on DK Metcalf. Whoever has DK Metcalf has definitely been frustrated. I know in the leagues that I have DK Metcalf, I have been frustrated with DK Metcalf. So if I can go trade Mike Evans to go get DK Metcalf deal I'm looking to do. If I can trade Garrett Wilson and go get DK Metcalf, I would like that deal. Christian Kirk for DK Metcalf. And those might even be more expensive. You might be able to throw a Zay Flowers on Michael Pittman. Go get DK Metcalf. Now, someone in the comments is probably going to tell me those deals aren't doable, but everything is doable unless you try. So go send out some offers for DK Metcalf to see what that could look like for your team. Our next player we're going to be talking about is Nico Collins. And yes, is Nico Collins the most explosive, amazing wide receiver in this Houston Texans offense? No, I think Tank Dell is definitely overtaking Nico Collins as an alpha, but Nico Collins has proven elite level fantasy football value this season. If we look at last week, 14.4 fantasy points, put him as the wide receiver 13. The week before that had seven wide receiver 67. Week before that 12, week before that six, week before that 35, week before that four, week before that 27, week before that 14. So yes, it seems to be a roller coaster with Nico Collins, but Nico Collins, even if he is the wide receiver two in this offense, Tank Dell has overtaken him. It still is exciting for Nico Collins. Still has a high snap share. He still has high targets. We like to see the end zone targets for our guy, Nico Collins, having top 12 red zone targets, which is exciting for Nico Collins. So I'm looking to go trade for Nico Collins because I think a lot of people have maybe soured or think, oh, Tank Dell's overtaking him. I need to get out on Nico Collins ASAP. But when we're looking like who Nico Collins has fallen behind, like guys like Michael Pittman and Zay Flowers, and he's ahead of guys like Debo Samuel and Adam Thielen, I think he's appropriately valued right now. But I'm willing to take the shot on him because if we would have been talking about Nico Collins just a few weeks ago, he would have been in the top 18 wide receivers for us. So go get some Nico Collins. I think those wide receivers, maybe pair two lower end wide receivers to go up and get Nico Collins. I think Nico Collins as your wide receiver two, wide receiver 
three heading into the playoffs is something that I really like. Our next guy we're going to be talking about is Tony Pollard. Yes, Tony Pollard has had all the volume this season, where he has a 70.1% snap share, put him as the RB8. He's got a 67% opportunity share, RB14. And with weighted opportunities, he is the RB6. And he has the second most red zone touches. And now you're telling me, Caleb, well, why does that put him as the RB18 on the season so far on a points per game basis. It just hasn't all clicked for this Cowboys offense. And last week, only 9.3 fantasy points. The week before that, 6.5. It really hasn't had a great week in, since week six, where he only had 17 fantasy points. It wasn't amazing. His high on the season is 19.9 fantasy points. Really, his upside here is RB11 or RB12 on these recent weeks. And so you're telling me, Caleb, gosh, why are you telling me to buy Tony Pollard? I still have Tony Pollard as a top 10 running back rest of the season. And I think a lot of people that have Tony Pollard, they're willing to get out. They're willing to trade, trade Tony Pollard for a Kenneth Walker. They're willing to trade Tony Pollard for a Saquon Barkley. They're willing to trade Tony Pollard for Derrick Henry. And all those guys, as much as we like to see the volume, they just don't have the same type of upside as Tony Pollard. And now I know Tony Pollard's upside hasn't been shown. But when you're looking at the volume that Tony Pollard has, along with the offense where you're seeing Dak, CeeDee Lamb really start to cook here over the last few weeks, go give me some Tony Pollard as my next trade target. My next trade target after that is going to be Alvin Kamara. Alvin Kamara, absolutely electric. A lot of people probably have him as a top five running back rest of the season. I've seen places where he's only a top 10 running back. So if you're able to get RB6 to 9 prices for Alvin Kamara, I I think that's something that I am willing to do. And no, do I think he's going to have the Christmas day game where he puts up seven touchdowns in the fantasy football playoff? But I also think he just continues to put up solid fantasy football production. If we look at the last two weeks, he had 11 fantasy points this last week, RB19. Weeks, two weeks before that, he had 29, 27, RB2, RB4 finishes. Five out of his total six games, he's been a top 10 running back. So Alvin Kamara, it seems like the baseline is top 10. And that's the type of running back that I want to have on my team with that consistency. I'm willing to flip these other guys. I'd even be willing to flip Tony Pollard. Alvin Kamara. And I know we just talked about Tony Pollard and how much we loved him in our last buy, but we'll see what it's going to take to go get Alvin Kamara. I think that's going to help you long-term. And my final, final buy for this video, trade target is going to be Bijan Robinson. And I hear you, <laughs> Caleb, Lord have mercy. You talk about Bijan Robinson every stinking video. You also told us early in the season to draft Bijan Robinson in the top five to six picks. And look how that's turned out for my fantasy football team. I hear you. Do I have Bijan Robinson top 10 running back rest of the season? I think you have to. So if I can trade Tony Pollard, Saquon, Kenneth Walker to go get Bijan to whoever might be upset about the Bijan on our, that would be a move I'm looking to make. Because at the end of the day, if we are pursuing fantasy football championships, there's a first place winner and there's either nine, 11 losers. And so it doesn't matter if your team's the second or third best team. We need you to get to the first best team. And Bijan Robinson, as much as we hate the fact that he hasn't gotten the volume, we know the talent is there. So if he can get the volume at some point, if Arthur Smith can come to his senses, if the management can be like, hey, dude, we drafted Bijan Robinson eighth pick. You got to give him more than eight to nine touches a game. I think we could be talking about Bijan Robinson still being able to get into that middle to high end RB1 type range. I know that's crazy to say, but it's still a bet that I'm willing to make with Bijan Robinson on my own fantasy football team. So hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. If you're new, let me answer any start sick questions down below. Let me know any comments down below and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.